Hello, I'm Jared Nelson from the Investing Channel, and welcome to Pros and Cons, the show where we take you through the risks and opportunities behind the trending ideas in the market. Now, there is no denying that stock markets are exuberant these days. Many stocks, particularly small caps, went wild over the past few weeks. No, we're not talking about a 10 to 50% gain here, but 100 to 500%. Have you seen those crypto stocks? Riot Blockchain's 12-month return stands at an astonishing 2,900%. Marathon Patent is running just as fast. Cannabis stocks went ballistic too. Tilray surged from just under $10 at the start of this year to $60 last week. Messages on Reddit and stock twits are nearly all bullish. Confident users kept swaying each other to buy more and more at higher and higher prices. Going to the moon is the phrase used over and over again. Moonshot bets are what retail investors are buying into right now, hoping to earn outsized returns over a short period of time. Some lucky ones are showing off their seven-figure stock profits constantly on these platforms. These are life-changing sums and unthinkable just a few months back. No wonder those standing by are throwing caution to the wind and deciding to join the game now. A quote by Charles Kindleberger is apt here. There is nothing so disturbing to one's well-being and judgment as to see a friend get rich. According to a recent Financial Times article, $58 billion of funds flowed into stocks last week, the highest single-week inflow in a decade. Stockbrokers are profiting handsomely from the rampant trading activities, as are exchanges. Their stocks are up and away. But are these fantastic returns all too easy to make? A few weeks back, a simple risk-reward analysis of the stock market favored taking on risk. Then, many stock trends were on the cusp of breaking out of their long-term trading ranges. Now, things are more complicated. Prices have gone up significantly, as has the risk. Buying a stock at $1 has a completely different risk profile to a $15 entry point. The latter entails much more risk and much lower returns. Assuming a stock peaks at $30, those who bought at $1 or $2 would have made 15 to 30 times their initial capital, while those who bought late at $15 only generate 100%. Good, but not spectacular. All those easy pickings appear to have been made already. Moreover, as prices go up, return expectations should go down. But what we are seeing is the opposite. Return expectations are rising. Many who bought at $15 are still hoping for a 10 times return. Extrapolation of past returns, as we all know, is one of the most dangerous psychological biases. Remember, too, that stock markets rarely go only one way. They spend a lot of time moving sideways. A tipping point will eventually check the current rally. The bulls, however, will argue that the tipping point is still far away. The Federal Reserve remains in an ultra-accommodative mode, while stimulus checks are flowing to households, enabling retail investors to dabble in stocks. And the vaccination program is still progressing at speed. There is light at the end of the pandemic tunnel. Many are expecting a pent-up demand for goods once social restrictions are lifted. All these factors are certainly bullish for the economy and the stock market. The question is, have the markets priced in these positive scenarios already? Two different animals are on display here, the roaring stock market and the limping real economy. For the moment, it seems that the stock market is getting ahead of itself. Risk is building while the real underlying economy is still trading underwater. Another thing worth mentioning is leverage. Did you know that margin debt in the U.S. is going through the roof? Investors are so confident about future returns that they are borrowing more to buy stocks. This is always a warning sign. Note, too, that interest rates are rising. We talked about this a few weeks back. Who knows, a spike in interest rates, despite the ongoing QE, may cause the stock market to wobble. Given the above observations, perhaps it is time for investors to consider trimming equity exposure to sectors that have been rallying for a while. It is worth stressing that we are not saying that one should get out of the market completely, all at once. Booking some profits on the way up might be a good idea. Raise some cash and short-term liquid assets for the time being. This allocation reduces portfolio volatility while reloading buying power if prices do correct in the weeks ahead. That's all we have time for this week. To find out more about our TrackStar IQ data, sign up to our free newsletter at investingchannel.com forward slash TrackStar. Remember, make sure you do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions.